today for huge savings on geothermal systems. This is KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar. Brought to you by Con Communications. This is KHQA. It's your news now. And this is Saturday, September the 19th, and you have entered the Sabado Gigante edition of Overtime. I always wanted to work for Univision, where I think my name would have been Guillermo de los Gatos. But I digress. I don't speak Spanish, by the way. <laughs> Thanks to Mother Nature's impressive but sporadic show of force and the cancellations it inspired last night, today we get the equivalent of a second Friday's worth of high school football to entertain you with. So we've got extended coverage of unfinished business tonight for Quincy High School, Jacksonville, Winchester West Central, Camp Point Central, and West Hancock, all coming up for you in just a bit, plus all of the day's other high school goodies. But we start with college football, as you do on Saturdays. And if nothing else, a golden opportunity tonight for the fighting Leathernecks of Western Illinois to shock the world, or at least get their sluggish offense untracked at the expense of top-ranked Coastal Carolina. These highlights brought to you tonight by KHQA alum and our good man, not to mention current Myrtle Beach TV superstar, Mr. Joe Morano, little Joe in the house, providing us video of the new teal field the new teal turf tonight in beautiful coastal Carolina. And speaking of cameos, it's Bryce Cox, Bowling Green High School alum, strength and conditioning guy for the basketball team at Coastal Carolina. Early on, all about the defense, and that is Q&D's Eddie Holschlag with a takedown. Western gets the ball back, and it's the Nico Watson show making his first start since 2013. Punches it in for a 7-3 advantage for the next at that point. Coastal would lead 10-7 at the break. Second half, though, here's the Trent Norvell we were looking for. Nice hook up right here with Joey Borsellino just outside the end zone. Borsellino with 113 receiving yards. Next up, more of Nico Watson. Had 156 yards in the night. Two scores. This one makes it 14 to 10 next. Coastal fans a little confused. However, Coastal Carolina going back to work. Alex Ross, he's a good one. Hooks up with Chris Jones to start the fourth quarter. He hauls it in for a 19-yard grab. Nine minutes to play. Western would answer though. Trent Norvell looking for Stacy Smith for the score. Western Illinois now leading 27-26 on the number one team in the country, mind you, in the fourth quarter, like they did last year against a really good North Dakota team. One last push from the shots, though, right here. Henderson gets his second touchdown of the day. He had 165 yards. The two-point try makes it 34-27 at that point. Western had one last chance here to try to break through. Two seconds left, however. Trent Norvell's pass is deep, but batted away. Coastal Carolina dodges a bullet. Western with its best effort yet this season, but in a loss, 34-27. The Leathernecks get a week off and then they come home two weeks from today for homecoming against Southern Illinois. How about Quincy University opening up that brand spanking new $4 million facility playing on campus? And that is a nice luxury indeed for the Hawks and they would take advantage. Down 7 to nothing early in the first quarter. Here comes Darius Burst, the freshman in spelling right here. Mr. Chris Harrison, he spelled him well. Touchdown Vulture, 18 yards in to tie this thing up at seven apiece. Lincoln would add a field goal to make it 10 to seven. Jacksonville's finest would answer this one. Nick Lonergan have a day today. Three touchdown passes, including the 65 yard hookup with our guy Cody Wood to make it 14 to seven at that point. Crimson to Crimson. Oh, Crimson and Clover, you gotta love it right here. Chris Harris then going to work. More from the Central State Eight. Mr. Chris Harris out of Sacred Heart Griffin. 26 yard touchdown to put the Hawks up 21 to 10, and they're never gonna relinquish the lead this game. Late second quarter, Lauder get to Eric Ponder. Great strike right there. Made it 35-17 Hawks. Oh, but Mr. Lonergan not done yet. He could run it as well. I mentioned the eight or the three uh, passing touchdowns. Well, we'll show you some more right here. Nice strike as well in this one. All kinds of goodness today for Mr. Lonergan. A rushing touchdown as well and an eight-yard keeper where he spun away from everybody to make this thing happen. It would be all Quincy University all the time. Lonergan, look at the Jets on that guy. Beautiful spin move. Hits the B button, and my goodness, Quincy University looks good. They had to weather a late charge from Lincoln, but... The Blue Tigers, no match in the end. Quincy University wins 42-37 to christen the new field in very nice fashion. By the way, today, speaking of locally grown quarterbacks, tough day on the road for Coy Dorothy, the pride of West Hancock and McMurray, as they end up losing to Westminster in Fulton, Missouri today, 24-22. Coy Dorothy does hook up, though, 
on his first touchdown strike of the season, had 114 yards passing in that one. Evangel traveling to Culver Stockton, inauspicious start in this one for the Wildcats. Opening kickoff goes to Brock West, and he is going to go west, young man, in a big way, as this, my friends, is a kickoff return all the way deep to the 15-yard line. However, the Wildcat defense would limit Evangel to just a field goal. Second, Cat possession, fourth and six. Jeff Treadway back to punt, at least it looked like it. Tyreek Gordon on the fake punt. That's a 40-yard pickup, and that is some momentum, which the Culver Stockton Wildcat offense desperately needed. Right here, Mr. Gunterman hands off to Sean Enoch, and Mr. Enoch going to take it down to the five-yard line, or the six-yard line, if you will. Fourth and goal. Enoch going to go right over the top and score the touchdown, giving Culver Stockton its first lead of the season at 7-3. Defense looked good in spurts from that point on in the first half. Matt Kelly coming up here with the traditional TFL tackle for loss and stringing out the option pitch. However, Culver Stockton's defense would relent a little later in the first half and things would get ugly late in this one as Culver Stockton remains winless. Tough, tough day for the Wildcats as they end up losing to Evangel and go to 0-3 on the season. 52-20 is the way that ball game would end up. Regionally, not a great day by any stretch of the imagination. North Carolina brings the Fighting Illini back to earth with a 48-14 win at home to the Tar Heels. Uh, you know what? Good news, however, for Iowa, which ends up beating Pitt today by the final count of 27-24. That score just went final a little while ago. And if you were a Mizzou fan... Boy, it was ugly on the offensive side of things. The score you don't see there in front of you, 9-6. to six, Mizzou ends up winning today over UConn, but it was just an ugly offensive effort, one that makes you question the continued decision to play Matty Mock at quarterback. But we'll see what happens. Drew Locke's out there, guys. Maybe it's time. But we'll move on. We've got lots of good high school football coming your way, including trips to Quincy High School, on the road at Rock Island. That was a dandy showdown today, although maybe not the result the Blue Devils were looking for. All of it coming up next. All rows lead to Burris hybrids for profit across all of your farm acres. Burris corn and soybeans have the technology in or on the seed to meet all of your farm's needs. As a leader in corn following corn testing, Burris products get the most out of your acres. And their Power Shield treated beans are tops for insect and disease protection. At Burris, more grain in the tank means more money in the bank for you. So for profitability, fence row to fence row, think the Burris family of products. The ground provides for us in many ways. It's where we played as kids. It's where feeding our family begins. It's where our dedication blossoms. With a water furnace geothermal unit from Peters, the ground also provides free renewable energy to heat and cool your home. Geothermal with Peters is the cost-effective choice that can save you up to 70% on utility bills and tax credits are still available. Call today for a free evaluation and discover water furnace at the nation's number one dealer, Peters Heating and Air Conditioning. Any of these three won't satisfy like our one. The second to none foot-long Subway steak and cheese. Juicy, sizzling steak topped with a blanket of delectably melty cheese and made the way you say with all the freshly chopped veggies you love. Maybe even some Chipotle Southwest sauce. Then you'll have a monument to your taste, always on freshly baked bread. The heartiest appetites are no match for the Subway steak and cheese. Subway, eat fresh. Today's lesson, geothermal. Stevens Heating and Air installs Climate Master geothermal heat pump systems, keeping families comfortable and cutting energy costs up to 80%. See Stevens Heating and Air today for huge savings on geothermal systems. The Built Ford Tough Sales event is on, so all the dirt, farming, trees, rocks, camping, boating, and whatever the heck else you plan on doing could be a whole lot easier. Thanks, of course, to the lighter, stronger, and now safer than ever 2015 F-150. And during the Built Ford Tough Sales event, it's ready to go to work for you. Get 0% for 72 months or up to $7,050 in total savings, plus up to $28.85 average dealer discount on F-150. Only at your quality Ford dealers. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Wheel of Fortune, weekdays at 6.30 p.m. on KHQA-CBS. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar. Brought to you by Con Communications. 
And welcome back to Overtime, everybody. The Friday night portion of the high school football docket proved most illuminating this week. Most saliently, any doubts about Van Farr, Rushville Industry, and Knox County appear to have been emphatically wiped out and answered. But the week five question marks were far from over. A huge game on tap for the now state-ranked Winchester West Central Cougars. A chance for former doormat West Hancock tonight to go to 4-0. And our first real read on the defending Western Big Six Conference champions, Quincy High School, on the road at Rocky today. Good start, however, for the Blue Devils in the first half. Devin Smith powering it. Nice to see the big fullback going right here. His two-yard touchdown, that fumble didn't matter. It was already, he already crossed the plane. Made it 7-0 in favor of the Blue Devils. All tied up at seven apiece. Check out Devin Austin and Austin Ashman on the hook up here. Ashman with the great concentration and the even better juggling act and hands for the touchdown to make it 13 to 7 in favor of the Blue Devils. More from Devin Smith had 97 rushing yards in the first half alone including this nine yard touchdown. It was 21-7 at one point in the first half for the Blue Devils. Two turnovers in the last four minutes of the half saw Rock Island come all the way back tie it at the intermission. Bottom line, at the end of this ballgame, Rocky would drive the field in the final minute 47 and deliver the game-winning touchdown. Rocky beats Quincy High. 30-28 to was your final. West Hancock taking on Porta. How about that Titan defense led by Will Fox today? Really good in the first drive. Porta, the Blue Jays going nowhere. Andy Bird doing his thing. Gosh, I like, like that young man. Great young defensive tackle. He's going to be really good the next couple of years. First possession, second play of it. It's Will Fox, 56 yards to the house. Makes it 6 to nothing. Titans, before you could blink in this one. First drive for West Hancock. Lasted two total plays. How about this guy, Jared Deddy, coming up with the interception. I hope we pronounced that right. I have not said his name yet, but we're going to say it a lot here. Jared Deddy with a nice interception right there. The pickoff, he's going to take it all the way down the sidelines. Going to get hit and take out his own teammates standing there unawares. Hey, but you know what? Tough guys get up and continue to play, and Jared did exactly that. Play action, perfection today from Jim Unruh. He dials up the Chase Dooley to Chance Cooper. Catch right here. Couldn't have been more wide open. 47 yards at that point made it 12 to nothing. More play action. Action from the West Hancock Titan playbook. John Swanson wide open for the two-point conversion. Makes it 14-0 at that point. Then Dooley going back to work again. Same combination. Oh, you got to love this. Going the other way with the play action. Tell you what, if Quincy Notre Dame was scouting, they got an eyeful today of the passing game. Mr. Swanson in for the score as well. 20 to nothing at that point. West Hancock not done yet. Who doesn't like Jacob Lohman? He's not really what you would call tall. But man, does he get it done running the football. Just a dynamo for this team. Check him out right here. 18-yard touchdown. He's going to disappear off your screen. Going to disappear off the hill off the other side right there. But uh, you can't hurt Jacob Blowman. He's a wrestler, and he's a football player, and he's tough. At that point, 26 to nothing. The defense was really good as well. Will Fox, another tackle for loss right there. Then it's Chase Hartwig stepping up right here for Travis Cook's team. Check him out right here, doing his thing on the fumble. He's going to get into the backfield, get a tackle for loss right there as well. And then how about some Tony Newland, another name we haven't called yet. But, man, what's some nice pass coverage out of this kid, just kind of roaming around and doing his thing out in space. He's going to get the tackle right here and snuff out an attempted first down right there. That's textbook stuff as he gets the lift and the drop and the clean right there. And that would set up a little more Jacob Lohman as he's going to score yet again in this one. Lohman with a couple of touchdowns on the day. I think he finished with three. Didn't see final stats yet, but we can tell you this. West Hancock was impressive in going to 4-0 as they end up knocking off Porta by the final count in this one of 60 to nil. There you have it. How about Camp Point Central trying to bounce back? They're one and two on the season of the Panthers. First play from scrimmage is now the longest play in the history from scrimmage for Central as Kyle Johnson's going to take this and go 94 yards to the house. That is a quick offensive answer, kids, as it's seven to nothing Central Panthers at that point. Beardstown struggling to mount any kind of offensive threat today, and it was some really good defense that made that happen. Check out Justin Rossmiller coming in, going to break this up, pop out the fumble. Central will recover and go right back to work. Not a huge yard day today for Brody Bivens, who again isn't what you would call tall, but man is he shifty. Look at the moves right here. Going to make five different guys miss right there. And uh, that's going to set up a first down and set up Dylan Bonk, who's going to take this on the jet sweep, go to the house, make it 14 to nothing Central Panthers at that point. Defense still tough for the Panthers. Keaton Heineke, boy does this young man have a motor, and you see it right there. Tenacious finishing for the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Again, Bivens, check him out. He's got a full head of steam. Gives everybody the juke. Going to step out of two different tackles right there and just keep going moving the ball up that ends the quarter and that sets up Noah Deerwester naked bootleg right here for 25 yards of the quarterback keeper going to get some nice blocking ahead of him as well 
He'll get some better blocking in just a second right there as he goes in for the score. That made it 20 to nothing Central Panthers at that point. How about some passing as well? Deer Wester hooking up right here to Reed Jibben, who comes up with a nice catch to advance things. Now, Beardstown did play some defense and some pretty good defense at times. Big Adam Kirshner doing his thing for a tackle for loss right there, but Central was not to be denied in this game. Playing ticked off after the loss. Check out Brody Bivens doing some Barry Stander stuff in space right there. Jumping three guys. That is about as good a six yard run as you will ever see. And this thing was just pretty much over at that point. Devin Casson's going to step up and get a nice tackle right here. Going to set up one more Dylan Bach touchdown we'll leave you with. As you can see, Camp Point Central, I don't know who Central C is. Maybe that's like high C or something. But this two-yard touchdown finished the first half nicely for Central as they get the win 14-6 over Beardstown, bouncing back from a pair of losses early in the season. All right, I mentioned it. Winchester West Central, Alex Ebbing and company taking on Carrollton. Winchester West Central state ranked this week and looking to make a statement against a Carrollton team that blew them out last year. Carrollton marching down the field on the opening drive. How about a day for Mr. Brandon right here? Cole Brandon from eight yards out, the touchdown run, puts the Hawks up at that point with the two-point conversion, eight to nothing. Central would answer right back. Luke Weider on the big kickoff return right here into Carrollton territory. And a few plays later, the Cougars would do what the Cougars do, catch in offensively. They ground and pound in this one. Lance Barnett going to make the thing happen right here, and he is a forceful young man going in. Two-point conversion wouldn't count. Eight to six, Carrollton at that point. Carrollton, though, in a game that didn't have much defense in it, marches right back down the field on the next possession. Tyler Fry right here from 15 yards away with a touchdown grab from Wade Pro. The Hawks back up 14 to six late in the first quarter. West Central's offense continue to move the football, though. Big pickup right here through the seam for 21 yards, and that sets up Kobe Hoover. Oh, look at this. Converted quarterback, really nice looking running back right there. Two point was good this time, 14 all at that point. Carrollton would go up 28 to 14 and looking to add more before the half. Time expiring. If Carrollton was in our viewing area, this would be play of the week. Pro to Mr. Cole Brandon over the middle right there. 77 yard touchdown catch with a buzzer off right there. Untimed player, you kidding me? Carrollton leads 34 14 at the half. No quit in West Central though. How about this to start the second half? Luke Weider again, 67 yards of absolute goodness from him right here, right through the heart of the Hawk defense. Two point was no good, 34-20 at that point. Carrollton had a response every single time Central would answer, though, and good teams do that. And since they've gotten their full roster back, Carrollton has been a monster. Again, Cole Brandon right here, another touchdown run from 10 yards, made it 42-20 to Carrollton at this point. West Central never quit fighting, and that's sort of the big change they've made. They're really good. Kobe Hoover back in. At quarterback now, Lance Barnett, three yard touchdown grab made it 42 28. But Carrollton just wasn't going to let this thing go. West Central tastes defeat for the first time this season, and Carrollton gets its biggest red letter win yet of this season 56 28, your final nice win there. We mentioned Cole Brandon, his cousin Joe Brandon had a night or two because Jacksonville's game started last night, ended today. Let's talk about Joe Brandon, as good a quarterback as you'll find, and he can run it a little bit too right here. Seven yards away, he's in for the score, but we're not done with Jacksonville. Taking on Roy Gully, the third in Springfield. Brandon going to work through the air this time going to hook up with CJ Wright for the touchdown strike made it at this point 14 to nothing Jacksonville late in the half Brandon going to do it again man the kids got some jets as well as that big time Brandon Cannon for an arm Mr. Brandon going to show off some mobility he's going to keep it right there on the read and he's going to go 41 yards to the house to put Jacksonville up 26 to 10 at the half more from Joe Brandon running wild in this game third quarter now and this time, the third quarter saw Mr. Brandon. Oh, he's going to take it to the house again. This was still last night's portion of the game, 33-10. to 33-16 with 8.47 left in the game. It was delayed due to lightning, so we pick it up on Saturday at 10 a.m. First Jacksonville possession, and Brandon starts right off where he'd left off in this game. Mark Grounds likes football by the light of day, by the way. Mr. Brandon rushing touchdown is fourth on the ground, fifth total of the day, made it 40-16, to and Jacksonville would hang on to win, which was kind of an ugly finish today, but Jacksonville gets it done. Jacksonville improves to 3-1 and on the season with a 40-30 to victory there. By the way, Felt like we sold it short, short shrift last night. So Knox County, Milan, big win for Knox County, as I mentioned earlier. Hayden Miller leading the charge. Nick Edwards finds him. One-handed grab for Mr. Miller, and he was a machine catching the football. More for Miller this time. And again, Edwards going to find him and find him nicely wide open to continue to move the ball. And Milan really had no answer for the Knox County offense. Nobody has since Marceline in week one. And that sets up the B Ridge beast right here. Drew Hodge, big fella, just taking it in and running over tacklers. That's just unfair. It's abusive what he's doing to kids. Then it's Hunter Clucky going to do his thing as well in a couple of different ways. Catching the football and running the football for a score as well. 
And uh, Drew Hodge just had 70 yards rushing, but man, were they effective last night. He had a couple of big runs right here. Again, Hunter Clucky going to set that up after he goes in for the score right here. Hodge going to score another touchdown for our highlight reel here in just a second after Mr. Clucky sets things up right here with a nice run. And as you remember, Knox County won big last night, shut out Milan and got that monkey off their back. A couple of scores to pass along to you now. Let's talk a little soccer. Quincy Notre Dame taking on undefeated U-High today and losing at home 2-1. U-High now 13-0-1 on the season. Golf today, Quincy High school finished fifth in the always loaded peak and invitational at Lick Creek. Your low blue devil on the day, Mason Melton stepping up nicely, firing a 78. That was good for a top 20 finish for him. At the Fulton Invite in cross country today, check out the Hannibal boys showing out today. They take second place overall. Brendan Watson with a 10th place individual finish to lead the Pirates on the day. And we'll have more overtime for you coming up after this. Scotty's Fun Spot is your birthday party headquarters. For 40 years, Scotty's has celebrated thousands of birthdays, always taking it to the next level of excitement then and now. You can upgrade your party to a frozen theme with Olaf or even our new glow-in-the-dark party room. We know how to throw a party. Ages 16 and over, bring in valid ID and get free attractions on your birthday. Scotty's Fun Spot, where we put you in the middle of fun. What are you doing way out here? Streaming music videos. You got U.S. Cellular, right? Yeah. And you don't. What's your point? Well, U.S. Cellular would have you streaming videos or calling someone with a ladder right now. Oh, bump it up. With U.S. Cellular, now the middle of nowhere is the middle of anywhere. At Con Communications, we make life easier. Stop in today and let us show you how. Con Communications, connecting your life. Would you like to sleep better? Sleep sounder? Would you like to wake up feeling refreshed and ready for your day, free from nagging, stiffness, and soreness? A new mattress set from Sleep Tight is the answer. A good night's sleep can make so much difference in your overall energy and health. At Sleep Tight, you can choose from all the top name brands at the guaranteed lowest prices. Add top notch customer service and a sleep trial on every mattress, and we will find you a better night's sleep. Sleep Tight. Sleep Tight. It's Ford's SUV Sign and Go event. Take on any adventure in the Ford Explorer with a terrain management system and get the bigger picture in a Ford Edge with a front 180 degree camera. Just sign and go with zero down, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment hassle free. Ford is making it easier for you to be unstoppable. Now lease an Explorer for $399 a month with zero down, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment during Ford's SUV Sign and Go event. Only at your quality Ford dealers. Every shirt, every shoe, every TV, every record, every racket, every book, every rock'em sock'em thingamajig, every good you donate does the most good for our community. So shop, donate goods, and do the most good at the new Quincy Salvation Army Family Store. Well, before I dive into the softball scores, if you're man enough to make an interception like that, I'm man enough to find out how to get your name pronounced correctly. Thank you, Twitter fam. Jared Deedy from West Hancock will remember that name because he's going to be a good one. On to softball today. Highland Lady Cougars are the champions of the Louisiana tournament. They beat Monroe City 4-3 in a dandy. Dana Flanagan leading the way there. By the way, Louisiana finishes fourth on the day, losing to a good Clopton team 5-2. Earlier in the day, it was Salisbury taking the tournament title at Paris over Canton. That should say Canton, not Clopton. The first, the second, I should say, loss of the season for Canton. 7-6 to six today, despite Allison Phillips' two-run homer. Canton led that game at 1.6 to nothing. Uh, by the way, third place goes to the Clark County Lady, uh, excuse me, to the South Shelby Lady Cardinals, Lady Birds, I should say, as they win 10 to nothing over Clark County. Cameron Burke with a two-run homer in that ball game. And then earlier in the day, credit where credit's due, Canton finally is the first team to shut down Red Hot South Shelby, winning today by the final count of 7 to 3 was your final there. Big day for Hannibal. They, they lost in the championship game, obviously, by an ugly score to Warrington. But what a day on the softball diamond by the Lady Pirates. And I want to show you one of their scores from earlier in the day as they beat up on Wentzville Liberty. We want to leave it on the positive today. Final count in that one was 8-5. to five. Rachel Holterman with a home run in that game for the Pirates, who really made a nice run to a second-place finish there. Let's do some volleyball. Keokuk Invitational starts you off with Central Lee and New London. Tough loss for Central Lee. Tough draw early. Nice kill right here, though, by Brittany Matheson as Central Lee loses 21-11, 21 
110. Keokuk taking on Columbus Junction. Oh, and there's family in town for Ja'Kayla Hall. More on her in a second. Mackenzie Peasley against Columbus Junction, helping Keokuk just kind of bury things right there. Peasley not done yet. She's really good right here at the net and helping her team just kind of defend it and then knock it back. And Columbus Junction really couldn't match her at the front line. She gets the kill right there. But we're not done. Michaela Davis, she's not just for basketball or softball anymore. Nice ace serve from her. And then Ja'Kayla Hall, who made those relatives happy by serving up a bunch of points in a row right here, would set up, up nicely as Michaela Davis has her back. Keokuk wins this match in the early going today, 21-9, 21-10 over Columbus Junction. Stick with the highlights, though, because we've got Holy Trinity. No, stick with the highlights. Go back to them. Let's do them again. Are you going to cut me off the Holy Trinity highlights? All right, I'm going to give you some scores. We're going to try to come back to those. Quincy High School today, a winner over Rock Island in straight games. Two games to none was your final there. Quincy Notre Dame does likewise as well today in beating Peoria Notre Dame. Two games to none was your final there. And we've got Southeastern staying undefeated and winning the New Berlin tournament. Final count there saw New Berlin losing to Southeastern. Two games to nil. Your all-tournament team included Emma Derry and Colby McClelland, who was the MVP of the tournament. Time now for your Con Communications latest nominee. Let's just go straight to it tonight. You get a chance to vote at the end of this month. It is this guy, Mr. Lucas Klein from Quincy Notre Dame. Strong in net on a PK that could have tied this thing the other night against Springfield. And Luca was equal to the challenge. He's going to stymie this and win the ball game for Q&D. Your latest nominee is you see a great list of nominees already in tap for this month. Ethan Mack, Taylor Reese with the bicycle kip. Keep on going through them. we got to get back and try to get those Holy Trinity highlights on. Brody Dunker, a big win for you as well with the, the great... PAT to win a ball game, his team's first win in over a year. Olivia Jarvis with a home run. And as you saw, Jerry McBride last week. And of course, we'll have one more nominee for you before the voting starts. If you vote at KHQA.com, you got a chance to be a big time winner of a $25 prize package. We'll have more overtime coming up after this. The fall open house is going on now at Feilstein Camper Sales. That means